The plan's always the same. So the message is when faith is the answer. Now all of us can get that right. I say this so often on a test. <laughs> if we're given a 10 question test of how to uh, react when this happened or that happened, we, all give, we always know the right answer. If we've been in church any time at all, if we're saved, we know the right answers. But guess what? It's not always easy to do the right answers. Mm -hmm. When things fall against you, fear comes up on you, sometimes we forget. <laughs> Amen. I want to keep my mind on God. I can say I've only erected at any kind of speed one time in my life a hydroplane. I was going to work, I told you before, and it started raining real hard, hell on crew. I said, I got to take this off the cruise. And I started coasting down, you know, and got it all once the rain came. It's well, top hill must have been kind of like the rain in Charleston the other day. I don't know what happened. But I mean, it went from dry to puddle in a heartbeat and I started spinning around and as I was spinning around I had 70 miles 68 miles per hour at that time I said Lord I can't correct this Lord let me hit easy that's what I said <laughs> Lord let me hit easy another, another time I said I can't correct this I was going down a hill we work one day and it was real slick and the road uh, the car went sideways a little bit, only go about 40, went back sideways, I correct, went back and I said, Lord, I, I can't straighten this one out. And it bang, it went straight as the arrow. So I know the call upon the Lord and a couple of times as I go around in circles, send me my brother said, Lord, let me hit easy. He did. It went across the kind of meeting, it kind of Plowed in, it didn't even hurt. I drove on to work. I had to get a record for me out because it was a saddlebag, but drove on to work. <laughs> the Lord let me hit easy. But sometimes I don't always have the right re reaction. Nobody does all the time. I preached right. last night on failures. Amen. <laughs> and I looked around, I said, I said, Can anybody here think of someone that's not perfect? I'll give you a second to think about it. <laughs> Did you think of yourself first? <laughs> and whether it's right or wrong. <laughs> but we can kind of think of someone that's not perfect. As you look around, can anyone think of someone that has at one time or another failed? Can you think of someone? <laughs> Pretty easy question also. Amen. So we see these things. So we begin to know. So we react. So sometimes what is a common thing, when faith is the answer, we know that faith is always the answer. If we give them a test on it. <laughs> but sometimes we don't have time to realize it's a test. Mm -hmm. Amen. Sometimes he throws in a pop quiz. I, I say that so often. I, I use hey, walk in, and you teach her sometimes you just get that evil spirit. Us innocent people walk in the class. Us innocent people that have studied and obviously did all of our work and done everything we are told to do. You know, the mother student will walk in and say, I got a pop quiz, put away your book. The heart goes into overtime. That's probably what caused my AFib later in life. You all, I might be able to get compensation. <laughs> Amen. But the Lord does the same thing. I'm going along fine. I'm just a good little Christian. I, I'm just a good little Bible student. I, I'm just good. I, amen. I, I just do what God wants me to do. All of us, a pop quiz comes up that you never expected. <laughs> and sometimes we panic. Sometimes we fail. The thing is, failure has an answer. Repent. I'm glad failure has an answer. I, I'm glad failure is not the end. I, I'm glad I have it. I told you I worked as a millwright worked for a lot of years. They said, well, well, what I well the millwright said, what do you what do you do to well the millwright said, well sometimes I fix things, sometimes I broke things. 
Sometimes on the way home, when I get all the noise out of my head and all the background noise, I realize what I was trying to fix that day was not going to work. Amen. When I put everything else aside and all the talk and everything, all the people aside, on the way home, I fixed a lot of things. I could go back the next day and know what I needed to do to build something on the way home. I could clear my head. Well, in a Christian life, sometimes I got to clear my head. Sometimes I got to clear away all the noise. Hey, when it's all the background noise, sometimes we get in our life and it begins to hinder what we're supposed to do. I'm sure everyone has been there. You're trying to work on something or trying to do something, whatever you're doing. Write something, whatever. And all at once, after you got away from it or in the middle of the night, you woke up. You said, oh, because you got rid of all the background noise. <laughs> I'm glad for that. Amen. So in my Christian life, there's times I want to get rid of the background noise. Hey, I want to just get myself with God. I want to be like Jehoshaphat. But when he saw the uh, people coming in verse 3, uh, Jehoshaphat appeared. Uh, he said himself, uh, to seek the Lord. Uh, I hope I can follow those instructions. Uh, hey, uh, when I see a great enemy, uh, I hope I can say to the Lord and we look at Jehoshaphat's prayer and he prayed and he went back to actually the building of the temple when Solomon built the temple what God answered he went back to that in verse 9 when you see this if when evil come up upon us as a sword, juggler, pestilence and phantom we stand before this house in thy presence for thy name is in this house and cry unto thee affliction thou will hear from heaven amen thou will we're here in hell, but that's what Second Chronicles 7 I, I speak about. The, the Lord said, When you see this, I cry, and God will hear. Yeah. I'll hear from heaven. The Lord giving me instruction. Mm -hmm. The one instruction we know is Second Chronicles 7 14, when my people were called by my name. That's part of the instructions that God, of many other instructions that He gave. But when faith right. is answered, uh, amen. Uh, uh, we walk by faith. Uh, uh, we're saved from the very beginning of our journey. Uh, amen. For by grace are He saved through faith. Uh, the very beginning, everything hinges on faith. Uh, the very beginning. I, I, the, I can't convince you there are God by calling a voice out of heaven. Mm. But even when we see the things, you still have to have faith. Right. In the Old Testament, you look like a sea rolling back would have made everybody there want to serve God. Mm -hmm. When you see a red sea rolling back, you would think everybody there immediately, you would think everybody in the a region, everybody connected with that would serve God. Right. You would think there would never be another question. Hey, how we saw all the ten plagues, but then saw the sea roll back. Surely everybody connected with that say, wow, there is no other God like this God. Right. But immediately after that, is will begin to complain. You brought us out for no water. The God that rolled back to see you question that He can do something. The God that can roll back to see. I, I said the God that made the world. I, I keep on all the time. Amen. But evolution is convinced people that everything's by time and chance. Hey, there's no way we don't have enough seconds in the universe. Amen. To make things happen like they came out. It's amazing. Mm. I said about Monarch Butterfly the other day, brother and I was talking about. I only lived two or three weeks. But they fly up in here in Mexico. How they do that because the last batch of them live eight months. The first two that born early in the spring and through the summer live just two or three weeks. As a butterfly, they go through the uh, uh, worm cycle and all this, uh, which is amazing in itself. But the last one that needs to leave uh, to get back to work climate live about eight months. Now, evolution did that? No, they all died on the first go around. <laughs> Isn't God something the same thing? Amen. How would you like to be able to live? Amen. I can mean, still live them uh, half a month, live eight months. That's a lot of time. Those uh, so Barbara and Lord, you that have birthday, how we multiply by 16 times longer you're going to live? 
<laughs> be pretty old by that time. <laughs> pretty old. But God does it with the monarch butterfly. How does the little butterfly that <laughs> I mean, floats around fly across the gulf? <laughs> mm. How do they navigate? Amen. They navigate. They train. Uh, they're, and they're trying to figure out ways they navigate. How do they know this? How do they know where to go? How do they know where to come by? Hey, so I see God easily. Uh, it helps my faith alone. Uh, hey, uh, I bet by faith. Uh, at the very moment I accepted Christ, it was by faith. Yeah. Because people still see God and still don't believe. We have example after example after example, and you all can faith think of example. I guarantee everybody here can probably think of someone that uh, that uh, that used to serve God that don't serve God, or someone that was saved from a miraculous accident or some kind of hell thing, uh, and they say, "I'm going to praise God the rest of my life," and they quit praising God. Uh, amen. It's still by faith, no matter what. Uh, hey, uh, I, I see people only live from. I'll say from miracle to miracle. Hmm. They see something God done. They got a new car. They needed a car. God gave them a car. They prayed God for a month. Then they quit hmm. praising God. They quit praising God until something else happened. And they gave God credit so they praised God for another couple weeks. Mm -hmm. Then they quit praising God. Hey, hmm. I love God every day of the week. <laughs> I love God every day. I, I love Him in the good times or the bad times. But faith is the reason. Faith is the answer. Uh, hey, uh, uh, so very quickly. Uh, hey, uh, uh, so uh, uh, fear uh, is a natural occurrence. Uh, uh, Jehovah's of that fear. Uh, hey, but don't let fear drive you away from prayer and faith. Uh, don't let fear take away prayer uh, out of your life. Don't let fear take away faith out of your life. Uh, when we face me, we can go back and pick these stories up. Or we can say, Lord, like Jehovah's the fact say Lord uh, you told us uh, that you, if we would call upon your name you would hear and help mm -hmm. uh, Second Chronicles 7 mm -hmm. when Solomon dedicated the temple so sometime I'll tell the Lord Lord <laughs> When David faced Goliath, uh, he faced the unbeatable. Uh, in his side, it was unbeatable. Uh, amen. He faced him, uh, but he faced him in the name of the Lord. Uh, he said, The Lord uh, that has delivered me out of the bear of Paul and lying. Uh, amen. So I go back to things that God has delivered me from. I know God has delivered me uh, uh, from anything. He will continue to deliver me. Uh, amen. He'll either deliver me on this side of eternity or on the other side of eternity. Yeah, but faith is always the answer. Yeah. Amen. Yes. Amen. How can you get saved? Only by faith. All the sights you see in the world will not save you. If we could roll back Elk River here, that will not keep you saved. It will impress you for a while. But unless you dedicate to God, it will not take you very far. Right. I've seen it time and time again. I don't know how many times people have told me something uh, happened in their life says, so surely God has a job for me. And I would always say, I don't know about that, but I know the one job He has is to serve Him. Amen. Right. Uh, turn your life to Him. <laughs> serve Him. That's the job that God, uh, mm -hmm. not willing that any should perish. Uh, I'm glad that He uh, has abundant mercy. Uh, I'm glad uh, that He enjoys uh, and loves to forgive. Uh, hey, <clears throat> uh, Christ loved to forgive. Yeah. The woman that came, very bad woman that came, he said, Neither did I condemn thee, but go and sin no more. Mm -hmm. Amen. The woman at the well, amen. Uh, the Samaritan woman that had an attitude, uh, very much of an attitude, but the attitude kept breaking. She began to listen. There, every time uh, anybody that's not saved, there's some kind of wall uh, between you and salvation. Uh, oh, uh, I will that we can break down that law, uh, the wall. Uh, I will that we can break down whatever holding you uh, uh, from being saved or dedicated to God, uh, that we tear down that wall. Uh, amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A course at a time uh, until you can see God uh, as the Samaritan woman. Uh, she kept allowing God to speak, allowing Christ to speak, and the wall kept coming down. She was willing to listen, willing to mm -hmm. receive. So look around you, be willing to say, Wow, God, mm -hmm. you had to make this. Amen. You had to make this. 
you had to make the ability for the hummingbird to come back to the same theater on the same front porch after flying to Mexico. Amen. Wow. You had to make that ability. And we get lost. <laughs> and uh, some of y'all, not me, but some of y'all get lost in a parking garage. <laughs> and, you, <laughs> and, you, and you finally get out after you go around the wrong way two or three times. Hummingbirds got a brain half of the size of gray rice. A man can go uh, to South America and come back. Isn't God amazing? But you have to believe that by faith. It declare you have to accept this Bible. Uh, hey, this Bible is not just another book. Uh, it's a miracle book. Amen. So I begin to believe this Bible. Uh, I believe the story that I read today. Uh, I realize that God's the same God uh, and that faith is the answer. Uh, and the battles I can't win. I know God will win for me. Yeah. Amen. There's times say, class, you this was not yours. Right. This was not yours. That's right. You can't win it. You can't win it. Mm. I'll win it. Paul would say, My weapons are not carnal. <laughs> He said, I can't win the war. I, I, Paul will not accomplish anything. I, if you laid down the, I'll say laid down the word, he would uh, have been part of the writer of the mm -hmm. word. Uh, hey, I, Paul will not accomplish anything. If you laid down uh, the preaching of the gospel and picked up the sword, uh, he would have not won anything. But because of my weapons are not carnal, uh, hey, his weapons are spiritual, right. uh, and our weapons are Come still on. spiritual because God is greater. Yeah. So faith is always the answer. And we're going to close. When Randy taught uh, in the book of Acts in 27, Acts 27, I tell you, it's just beautiful because you can compare it so often. And I have written a note. Actually, I, I, I not, didn't notice it uh, the other day, I guess, but I had written a note in there sometime. We're in the boat of promise. <laughs> that is in a boat of promise. And it sounded like a message, but uh, it may be some other time, but a boat of promise. <laughs> except you abide in the boat. All right. But there was promise in that boat. He said, Paul, I'm going to take you to Rome. And if you paraphrase, like I said I would, <laughs> like a couple years ago, you're going to go to Rome. And Paul, I'm going to take these other 276 with you. <laughs> I want you to abide in the boat. The boat's going to crash, but abide in the boat. <laughs> but I love the statement that stood by me this night. And Paul made a great statement. And we all have to make this statement if we're going to live God in Christ. I believe God. I believe God. He said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. There's times that you're not going to know where God is. Hmm. In your life, you're not going to be able to see Him. Uh, amen. Uh, because the trouble and the waves are still coming. Uh, and because the problems are still there. Uh, amen. Uh, and the bad uh, is still happening. Uh, hey, uh, but you have to realize, uh, by faith, uh, I know that God is there. Amen. 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 Bless. So, so never, as a Christian, never say, I have no faith. Because the Bible said without faith it's impossible to please Him. Mm -hmm. Without faith it's impossible. So never say, I don't have the faith. No. Amen. You've got to live by faith. They're just different times, four different times in the Bible. You just shall live by faith. Mm -hmm. Okay, let us pray. Lord, we thank You and we love You. And we pray, God, we take the message and apply it to our hearts. And we pray, God, that those that do know you, that we live by faith and we believe in Jehoshaphat. And you say, I don't know what I'll do. I don't know what we're going to do. But our eyes are upon you. Yeah. And Lord, the answer came back that they didn't need to fight in this battle. At the end of it, when the, uh, uh, there was part of the country, people, the people there, Father Gess and ambushments were set up and, and the, uh, the army uh, was slaughtered and killed uh, and all kinds of spoil. They named the very child the Valley of Blessings. Hmm. There were three days in gathering. So it went from certain defeat to abundant victory. Your life could go from certain defeat to abundant victory.
because of one thing, faith. Amen. Because of faith. So, if you don't know Jesus, <coughs> just ask Him by faith. Mm -hmm. We can't do anything to prove anymore just by faith. Ask Him to come into your life. By faith, believe that He did. Yeah. By faith, live and confess. Some people get saved in their seats. Some people get saved in their homes. Some people get saved on the mountainside. Some people get saved at the altar. And I heard preachers lately sometimes uh, talk about uh, ask you, just ask Jesus, come into your heart where you are. And, and, and like that's a bad thing. Where you get saved is how you live after you ask that will tell me you're saved. How you live after that. Where you get saved or the position you're in when you get saved is not listed in the Bible. But we're saved by faith through grace. Yeah. By asking you to come into our life. So we pray God if there's anyone who needs salvation, Lord, they may ask you into their heart. They can come to the altar. The Lord, they can ask wherever. They can do however you lead them. But God, the important thing is how we live <coughs> after we ask. Mm. In thy name we pray. Amen. Amen.